Our top focus will be on right now. The U.S. President Joe Biden has described Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's approach to the war in Gaza as a mistake. And this is President Biden's sharpest critics of how the Israeli government is prosecuting the war against Hamas in Gaza. Biden made the statement during an interview with Univision that was taped just days after Israeli military strikes killed seven World Central Kitchen aid workers. He said, and I'm quoting him here, I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with this approach. I think it's outrageous that those four to three vehicles were hit by drones and taken out on a highway where it wasn't like it was along the shore. It wasn't like there was a convoy moving there, unquote. He also called on Israel to unilaterally agree for a six to eight week ceasefire in a seemingly reversal of his administrative position, which earlier demanded that Hamas should release some of the hostages that they are holding in the Gaza Strip in order for there to be any kind of a truce between Israel and the Hamas militants. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has said that Hamas has been presented a very serious offer for a truce and hostage deal. The proposal was handed by Egyptian and Qatari mediators at talks in Egypt. However, Hamas in their response said that the Israeli proposal on a ceasefire did not meet the demands of Palestinian militant factions, but it would study the offer further and deliver its response to mediators soon. Well, on the eve of Eid ul Fitr, an airstrike on residential buildings in the Nusret refugee camp in the central Gaza Strip has killed at least 14 Palestinians. The Hamas run health ministry said other airstrikes were reported in their El Bala in central Gaza and Rafah in the far south. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has repeatedly flagged plans for a ground assault on Rafah where more than one million displaced Palestinians are holed up. Now, despite international pleas for restraint. Now, as Israel continues with its assault in Gaza, the British government has decided not to halt sales of arms to Israel by British companies. Well, UK Foreign Minister David Cameron has said six months into the Israeli air and ground campaign in Gaza, triggered by Hamas's October 7th attack on southern Israel. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's government has come under heavy pressure to revoke licenses that allow arms exports to Israel. Whatever part of uh, the enterprise that we are... For more on this, our correspondent Susan Terani has sent us this report from New York on why U.S. President Joe Biden's reluctance to support a Rafah offensive doesn't seem to be enough to stop Netanyahu from going ahead with it. Take a listen. Despite President Biden's reservations about the potential consequences of a large-scale operation in Rafah, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to be determined to proceed with the offensive. The Israeli government has a history of disregarding U.S. concerns and pursuing its own military objectives. And it seems that Netanyahu is willing to do so again in this case. Now, it's important to note that Israel says that it's absolutely necessary to root out a terrorist infrastructure in Gaza, including Hamas's leadership and military cash, also citing the threat from Iranian-backed groups. Susan further explains the implications of U.S. supporting a hostage deal in Gaza. Take a listen. A U.S. support for the hostage deal in Gaza could help perhaps cool tensions in the region, particularly as it's near the Muslim holiday of Eid al-Fetch. However, the deal would also require Israel to release Palestinian prisoners, which could be controversial domestically, notably for Prime Minister Netanyahu. Additionally, the deal would not address the underlying issue of the conflict, and the U.S. and Israel would still need to develop a day-after plan for Gaza once those hostages are released. 